Morgan Freeman has been blessed with an iconic career, but behind the scenes, he's lost multiple loved ones under tragic circumstances and had his own close brushes with death. Morgan Freeman was born in Memphis, Tennessee on June 1, 1937. When he was two years old, his parents moved north to Chicago, leaving him behind in the care of his grandmother in Mississippi. This was a time when the Jim Crow laws that enforced racial segregation were still on the books. Interracial marriage was illegal, and the educational system was also horribly unequal. In some districts, the schools that black children attended were deliberately underfunded, to the point that they could only afford to stay open for four months instead of the traditional nine. The school that Morgan attended in Greenwood, Mississippi when he was six was in such bad shape that it only had one room. While the segregation was open and obvious, Freeman's youthful ignorance partly insulated him from the realities of racism. He would soon move north himself, but his childhood in Mississippi certainly had a significant impact on his life. I'm furious that I grew up feeling disenfranchised. When Morgan Freeman was just two years old, he moved in with his father's mother, Evelyn Freeman, in Charleston, Mississippi. For the next four years, he lived at his grandmother's house along with his older sister. He would still see his parents in Chicago during the summers, but then every fall, he would head back to Grandma's house to begin the school year. But that arrangement sadly came to an end when Morgan was six and Evelyn passed away. This was surely a tough adjustment as he was very close with his grandmother, and it was made even tougher by the fact that he now had to move full-time to Chicago, where he hated the cold weather. He also wasn't accustomed to the urban environment that differed so much from his rural upbringing. The Freeman family lived in the Chicago neighborhood of Bronzeville on the south side. Bronzeville had been the site of horrific violence just a few decades earlier during the race riots of the Red Summer of 1919. It was also relatively impoverished by the time Morgan moved there in the 1940s. During his teenage years, Morgan Freeman spent some of his time in Mississippi, but it wasn't always as carefree as it should have been. On one particular hot afternoon, he nearly got himself into a deadly predicament. He was hiking with a friend through a hilly area when they found a pond that promised to offer some relief from the pounding sun. They jumped in, but Freeman had difficulty swimming and nearly drowned. Luckily, a few bystanders were able to drag him out of the water. Despite that rescue effort, Freeman was far from okay. He had to go to the hospital the next day after his condition didn't improve, and it was discovered that he was severely malnourished. Part of that was due to his family's financial situation, as they didn't always have enough money to eat. Freeman ended up staying in the hospital for two weeks as he recovered from pneumonia and an abscessed lung. While the incident very nearly cost him his life, he was ultimately able to survive without any lifelong injuries. Considering his reputation for playing upstanding human beings, it might sound hard to believe that Morgan Freeman was once in a street gang, but that's the truth. When he was growing up in Chicago's impoverished South Side, violence was rampant. As recounted in Morgan Freeman, a biography by Kathleen Tracy, the future actor had to commit some crimes to be initiated into the gang, but his heart was never really in it, and he abhorred the violence of gang life. I refuse to take part in anything that is going to denigrate a people. This chapter of his life was so distressing that Freeman at times wished that he was back in Mississippi, even if it meant dealing with the more overt racism of Jim Crow. The name of the gang was The Spiders, and Freeman was a reluctant member who only joined because they offered protection in his rough-and-tumble neighborhood. He wasn't a full member of the gang, but he reportedly did more than enough to earn their protection. If Freeman had it his way, he would have just stuck to himself and minded his schoolwork, but that wasn't really an option when he was growing up. Fortunately, though, he was never caught committing any serious crimes. One of the most tragic parts of Morgan Freeman's childhood was his unfortunate relationship with his father, Morgan Porterfield Freeman. In fact, it wasn't until he was six years old that he saw his dad for the first time. That was during Thanksgiving when the elder Freeman was home on leave from fighting in World War II. Alas, it didn't go very well, as the younger Morgan recalled, I didn't like him. He was a mean man. This happened right around the time that Morgan's grandmother died. He briefly moved in with his father, who had returned from the army after getting divorced from Morgan Jr.'s mother. According to the younger Freeman, this period was one of the lowest points of his entire life. Things were so bad that Morgan only lived with his dad for six months before permanently moving back in with his mom and rarely seeing him afterward. On the few occasions that he did, it was for a haircut, as his dad was a barber. These rare meetings also allowed him to get a few extra dollars to give to his struggling mother, but Morgan always hated seeing his dad. The elder Morgan eventually died at the age of 47 from liver cirrhosis caused by years of excessive drinking. His son was only 24 years old at the time, and the two had never fully made amends with each other. After Morgan Freeman graduated from high school, he initially turned down the opportunity to pursue an acting career. He was offered a scholarship to Jackson State University in Jackson, Mississippi to join the theater program, but he instead opted to take a completely different route and enlist in the United States Air Force. This was a pragmatic decision by Freeman, who wanted to leave Mississippi and figured it would be a more secure career path than acting. Plus, he was motivated by the fact that many of his family members were veterans. He ultimately served for almost four years. 
Alas, it wasn't all clear skies for Freeman, and not just because of the usual difficulties involved with military service. He aspired to become a jet fighter pilot, but racism stood in his way. He served from 1955 to 1959, so the Civil Rights Act of 1964 had yet to ensure legal equality in the armed forces. Even though he did well and tested highly, he was never able to advance above being a radar mechanic, and he's blamed discrimination as the reason he never got the chance to be a pilot. In addition to that missed opportunity, Freeman's superiors would also make racist comments to him. He ended up leaving the Air Force just a few years before the United States entered the Vietnam War. So get out of here and uh, go on and be an actor. In the 1970s, Morgan Freeman looked like he was on a path to superstardom after landing the role of Easy Reader on the children's show The Electric Company, but off-screen, his private life wasn't going so well. As he revealed during a 1989 interview with The Washington Post, while he enjoyed being on the show and liked the cast, it also drove him to alcoholism. He didn't appreciate how he was inextricably associated with the show, as people would recognize him as Easy Reader the character instead of Morgan Freeman the actor. Freeman eventually went from drinking at lunch to bringing it home with him after he was done shooting, and his routine of martinis turned into scotch and whiskey. At one point, he was going through a few quarts of whiskey per week, and he was blacking out from drinking so much. In addition to the physical toll, the excessive drinking and his unhappiness with the show also began to affect his first marriage, which ended in divorce in 1979. He managed to quit drinking in the mid-70s, just before the end of the electric company's time on the air. Later in his career, Freeman was able to draw on his knowledge of alcoholism when he played a counselor in the 1988 movie Clean and Sober. He has since replaced alcohol with marijuana, which has allowed him to remain productive without ruining his personal life. I'm gonna go to the happy place. While Morgan Freeman might be one of the most successful actors in Hollywood today, that wasn't always the case. Early in his career, he often had trouble earning enough money to make ends meet. While he was usually able to find a job, it was typically menial work that paid poorly, like a fast food gig where he wasn't even allowed to keep his tips. Sometimes things got so bad that Freeman couldn't even afford groceries, which forced him to starve for days unless he could get help from a friend. Alas, asking for help was tough for the prideful Freeman, so he would resort to some less than savory meals in order to survive. This included combining milk and uncooked eggs together into a rough shake, which would sometimes count as a meal. He occasionally had better paid jobs as an office worker, but this was unfulfilling for someone as driven as Freeman was, so he decided to pursue acting instead, while also going on unemployment instead of having a steady paycheck. Courage is the key to life itself. On August 3, 2008, Morgan Freeman endured one of the scariest moments of his life. That was when he was involved in a serious car crash in Charleston, Mississippi. He was 71 at the time, and he had to go to the hospital for his injuries, which included a broken arm and elbow. He was lucky to have survived the accident, as his car reportedly rolled several times into a ditch. In addition to his injuries, Freeman also had to deal with some legal fallout, as his passenger sued him. The two parties ultimately settled the lawsuit out of court in 2009. Freeman is still living with the effects of the crash in terms of a condition known as fibromyalgia in his right hand. Fibromyalgia is a painful and chronic disorder that isn't fully understood by the medical community and doesn't currently have a cure. Freeman discussed this condition in a 2012 interview with Esquire as he revealed, The pain is up and down the arm. That's where it gets so bad, excruciating. For many parents or grandparents, their biggest fear is losing a child or grandchild in a terrible accident. And for Morgan Freeman, that tragedy sadly became a reality in August 2015. That was when his step-granddaughter Adina Hines was killed. Hines' grandmother was Freeman's first wife, Jeanette Bradshaw, whom he was married to from 1967 to 1979. Hines actually moved in with Freeman when he was married to his second wife. This was at a time when her mother, Dina, was reportedly struggling, and Freeman then played a big role in raising her. On August 16, 2015, Hines' body was found with several stab wounds that her boyfriend, Lamar Davenport, had reportedly inflicted. She was pronounced dead later that morning at the hospital, and Davenport was arrested. Authorities later determined that Davenport was under the influence of PCP when he killed Hines. He was also reportedly hallucinating about demons on the street. Davenport was ultimately acquitted of a murder charge, though he was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to 20 years in prison. Freeman was naturally upset by her shocking death. He released a statement to People magazine that read, Her star will continue to shine bright in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. May she rest in peace. Hines was only 33 years old when she died. She had briefly worked as an actress before her untimely passing. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.